So I'm Jim Collins. I'm a professor of biological engineering and the Tremere professor at MIT. And I'm also on the core faculty at the Wyss Institute and the Broad Institute. My passion for synthetic biology is really sparked by three motivations. The first is to train the next generation. I think within the field, we critically need young minds to help advance the field. The second motivation is really to come up with the next cool idea. The next cool idea for the field, either from an applied standpoint, which is our specialty, or a basic standpoint, to expand capability. And the third and probably dominant motivation for us is to see if we can advance synthetic biology in a way that it can improve other people's lives, primarily in the space of biomedicine and increasingly in the space of sustainability. I think one of the best definitions I saw as a successful scientist is that individual who can go from failure to failure to failure with undiminished enthusiasm. And I think I've recognized that really it's in the challenges where you can find your opportunities and that if the experiment doesn't go as well as you think, or it doesn't go anywhere along the way you think, or that in your, in your office and you think A should go to B should go to C, you get in the lab and A doesn't go to B, B doesn't go to C. And whereas many could get discouraged, we actually get encouraged to figure out, okay, why doesn't this work? And can we look at the failures or the unsuccessful experiments as means to open up and create opportunities for both discovery and innovation? Our efforts in synthetic biology have led to now new classes of diagnostics and therapeutics. In the diagnostic space, our paper-based diagnostics had a very big impact during the Zika outbreak, being utilized in six different countries as both a surveillance tool and a research tool. More recently, our synthetic biology and CRISPR-based diagnostics had an impact in the pandemic, being picked up by five diagnostic firms and utilized in multiple countries around the world to the order of about 10 million tests per year. And in the therapeutic space, we increase our advancing efforts on the idea that you can engineer living cells, microbes primarily, as new classes of medicine. And Synlogic, the company that we helped found, has been advancing these living medicines as synthetic biotics brilliantly into multiple clinical trials. And one such trial is now in a phase three, critical phase three trial, for advancing an engineered bacterium as a new medicine, new therapeutic for treating PKU, a rare genetic metabolic disorder. The first and foremost is to really have passion and energy for a particular area. Coupling that with curiosity, coupling that with, of course, a hard work ethic, but an, one that probably underappreciated by many, a, a ability to deal with failure. You don't want to accept failure, but you need to be able to deal with failure. And I actually think our academic systems are not well set up to train young folks to deal with failure. If you're a very good student, you'll often go through the system with A's, A pluses, and not see failure. And to be a successful scientist, you need to be able to do that experiment that's likely not going to work, that most of the stuff that we see doesn't work. And so to be able to have that resilience and persistence to go through, to believe in your idea, I think is critical to becoming a good scientist. You know, I'm incredibly optimistic for our world. I'm incredibly optimistic for the scientific community. And I'm incredibly optimistic for our young researchers. I, I, for one, wish I was 30 years younger. I think it's a really exciting time to be a young person considering a career in science. So many discoveries to be made, so many new advances to be created, to be innovated upon. I think as young folks are considering the space, I think it's important to be passionate and to explore, to see where your interests might be, to talk to as many people as you can, to find about their paths, their interests, see what's happening in different fields. And then as you find your field or your fields of interest, commit to becoming an expert. Don't try to become an influencer, try to become an expert. Mm -hmm.